Hello everyone, it is Susie. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. Hope everybody's enjoying their summer. It has been a minute since I have got in the craft room and really created anything at all. So um, I was asked by Mandy, um, her and Julie from Junk Journal Ideas and Inspirations group asked me if I would like to get in on this collaboration. They have a uh, Out With a Bang theme going on here, uh, the, the last days of summer, and uh, this collaboration runs from August 1st through August 31st, and so it is a month full of just fun and uh, lots of creations, lots of creators. So, uh, I have here uh, just a printout of what is going on every day. There will be a playlist that you, uh, I will link in the description box, that you can just click on and save it there so that you can get in on all month, the whole month you can get in on this. And just, uh, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some wonderful creations. So, uh, here is my list and uh, maybe I will set it here and if you would want to screenshot it or something, if that's something you want to do. Um, but, uh, this is the list. And like I said, that description will be in the description box. Okay? So, uh, Mandy has a Sunflowers and Doors, uh, Etsy shop. And Julie is from Julie's Papercraft. So, um, I am going to have, of course, those ladies' links as well in the description box to their shops. And right now, uh, you can get 50% off both Mandy and Julie's shop if you use the code OUT WITH A BANG, all caps. Um, that will give you 50% off from their shop. So, all of this I will give you the links to in the description box. So, uh, anyway, just going to be a fun month for sure. So, what I have made is, uh, well, I guess first I should tell you, now my uh, prompt was fairies and florals. So this is what I have made. This is so fun. I love this paper. This, of course, I have made some things out of before. This is the Graphic 45 uh, Sunshine on My Mind. And it just screams uh, summertime to me. And some of the things that I will actually miss when we get into the fall and all. It's just all those fresh watermelons and cantaloupes and all those wonderful things that come uh, with the summertime. So this is a little tote here that I have made just using some twine and of course the Graphic 45. I used the uh, coordinating cardstock this time. I didn't really use the cardstock that came in the pack. And uh, anyway, I'm going to show you that. And then this is a beautiful paper. This is Mandy's uh, original Poppies kit, is what it's called. And it is just gorgeous. And I love Poppies. So this was perfect for me. And so this is what I've used here. I'm going to give you um, a little craft with me or tutorial on how I made this particular tote. This is one is wide. Uh, now the one I did in the Poppies kit is a lot smaller. I mean, it's not as deep. It's not smaller, but it's not as deep, and it's a little longer. So, uh, I, you just have to modify the measurements that I'm going to give you, you know, uh, to just kind of suit yourself if, if uh, you know, these measurements don't work. But this is the uh, tote that we're going to actually make one of. And uh, anyway, so let's get started. I'm going to start with this this one here. Like I said, this was Graphic 45's uh, Sunshine on My Mind. And here is the bottom. And it's a really sturdy box because of the, uh, just the cardstock is a nice sturdy cardstock. So, uh, anyway, just cute as it can be. So much fun. And also, I believe you could get the pin and gear. Um, let me see if I have some. I uh, always keep these around. These are the pin and gear. You can get them from Walmart. And these are just those little notebooks. Uh, but you could even decorate the fronts of like four or five of these notebooks. And I think they will fit. Yes, they will. 
and you could even give these as a gift. So, anyway, this is just a fun little, a little idea there. It doesn't stick up too much over the top. So this would be a fun idea, too, if you just wanted to make some little notebooks for somebody and give as a gift. So, anyway, that is the front and back here. This twine is like, uh, I think I got it from Hobby Lobby quite some time ago. They actually had little Christmas trees on them, little the little wood uh, Christmas trees, and I kind of just took them off and, and used it uh, for this. I thought it would be a perfect match for this tote. So here are the little, uh, the little journals that I made to go in there. Just tied them with some of that twine. Both are identical, so I'm not going to open both. But uh, this is just kind of what it looks like. Each one has a pocket here to slip something in. These are just blank. They're just little blank uh, journals. And then, of course, the back will have a little pocket like so here. Let me get something in there. So here's you a, a pocket there. And then for the inside, I simply just use some embroidery thread, some black embroidery thread to actually bind it. So just a fun, a fun little uh, journals here. It's got one, two, three, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven folded inserts. So it would be twenty-two pages or 44 sides and that makes up the little journals and they're both identical I even use the same uh, the same papers in them so pretty much identical there so let's get this tied up and that is just the fun little journals okay and I will show you how to make this tote in particular now, for the one I did with Mandy, her original Poppies kit, this one I made a little longer because if I had things sticking out like my ribbons and whatnot, I made this longer than the actual journal is uh, tall. So, uh, this one here, uh, let's see what I measured this at. This one is a nine wide by five tall and a one inch deep and my journal ended up being the five and a half by seven and a half so anyway that is the size of the journal that goes in the little the little poppies i love it love poppies so let's get in and this one i decorated a little more because um uh my prompt was fairies and florals so i did get my um my uh, photos just mainly off Pinterest and some I just had on the computer already. Uh, but the pictures are going to be all black and white. The black and white here with um, this is just uh, a couple sitting in the garden looks like with their dogs. And uh, of course the kit is Mandy's. These are just some of the little picture frames. And then I used for my little fairies, I used the little black and whites of the little girls dressed as fairies. And here is just a tag. And I used my seam binding there, just in the red and the orange, to just kind of bring out the colors of the poppies. Here I've got another little uh, tag here journal on the back and then I just added the little picture there a uh, woman in the garden a little flower garden there then I ran some seam binding down the sides here is uh, added a little tag there this is just a little piece of uh, vintage ephemera some little Yahtzee uh, vintage Yahtzee sheets there. Here's another little tag. Just did some little collaging. Added some of these little uh, Market 49 there. Or 49 and Market. Added their little um, uh, 
negatives there. I like to use those. They they have some just beautiful stuff that 49 and Market. And then here is a little gal at the lily pond. Looking at the lily ponds there. Or lily pads. <laughs> and then here is just a little place to journal. I did do stitching in this uh, journal. Added some little girls there. Then I added some more just little photos of the little ladies dressed as uh, fairies here. And here is just a little scrappy booklet. Nothing, nothing much in it. Just a place for, for journaling. And I have just attached it then with my... Attached it with my paper clip. Here's just a little girl reading or looking at a magazine or something here with her flowers. And then I've added just some tags. Just from the, from the kit. This is just an old piece of uh, ephemera. Uh, Jasper County Title and Guarantee Company. I forget the date. Oh, 1935. Yeah, this was April 6, 1935. This is just some old ephemera that I found. And it is in there with the little postcard and tags there. This is just beautiful. Absolutely love the colors of this. Printed out so beautiful. And then I just used another piece of that. Uh, negatives there. Negative slides. And then here is another little gal dressed as a fairy. I just love this one. This is probably my favorite image here. This is actually ephemera up here, too. This is actually what came off of here. And then I just used the rest of it to, to make the little, the little scrappy book out of. So there we go. And then here's just another pocket of ephemera. We got the little postcards. We got the little girl there dressed as a fairy. You can always journal on the back. I left the backs just uh, white there where I had printed them off on the, on the paper. And then, of course, another tag here. The back is blank for journaling. We have another frame cut out with the little gal in her, in her uh, garden. Uh, flower garden. And this is the back and I've just kind of did a, like a little collage there of that. So anyway, here is our little um, journal. Just absolutely love the poppies. Absolutely love it. So uh, I just use seam binding on my uh, as my handles. Just use that orange and red seam binding and kind of tied some knots in it to to kind of hold it together uh, where it wasn't hanging so loosely. And then this just fits in there and just makes for just such a cute little, cute little tote there. Oops, it looks like I got a, makes for a cute little tote. So there we are. There we are. That was, that was definitely a fun uh, journal to put together. Okay, so let's get into our make. All right, so um, for this, you're going to need two sheets of cardstock, uh, whether it's patterned or whether it's plain. Now, this here, uh, on this one, I did use a heavy weight cardstock, a cream cardstock that I got at Hobby Lobby, so that it was nice and sturdy. So this one, I just used the um, the 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 heavy cardstock. And then um, just put the paper on top and decorate it. So, but you'll want it to be pretty, uh, you know, substantial there so that it, it's got some body to it, not nothing flimsy. 
So you're going to want two pieces at 11 and 3 quarters wide and 8 inches long. So if you're using a pattern, just make sure you're cutting it where the pattern's going right, you know. You're 11 and 3 quarters wide by 8 inches long. You're going to be an inch at the top, okay, and you'll run your score an inch at the top. Then on both sides, you are going to score at an inch and three quarters, okay? So you'll take it and you'll go an inch and three quarters, okay? And you're going to score on both sides. Both sides, you're going to take this inch and three quarters and run your score down it. And then on the bottom, okay, on the bottom, you will also score an inch and three quarters. So you'll just set it in and inch and three quarters. Okay, so then you have scored your inch and three quarters. So what I have is I have an inch at the top scored, inch from the top score line. In from the sides, inch and three quarters score line. Up from the bottom, inch and three quarters score line. Now, if you want, and this is just optional, if you want it to kind of bend in, okay, I scored a center point from my inch and three quarters here. So I actually have a score line at seven eighths inch. So, so at the seven eighths inch uh, mark, which is not quite an inch. It is the eighth of an inch less than an inch. Your two little lines before the inch. That is where I scored. And what that is, is that's just my center of my inch and three quarters. So that it give me that little bend uh, just a little bit easier. And it'll make sense once we once we uh, start with it. So once I have my papers scored, okay, I'm just going to start bending them over. Get my uh, score tool here. And just go through and get all your score lines. Okay, just get all your score lines nice and and uh, scored down, okay? Okay, so now I have all my all my uh, score lines nice and creased. And I'm going to give you the measurements one more time. Okay, so we are 11 and 3 quarters wide by 8 inches long. We've scored in an inch from the top. We've scored in at 7 eighths inch and an inch and three quarters from both sides. You're coming in. And then at the bottom, we went an inch and three quarters. Okay? And that is our measurements. All right. So once we have that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down my top because I want it to be a nice, no uh, raw edge kind of thing. So I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to grab a little glue here. Okay. And you will want to glue yours better. I'm just going to put a little glue just for time's sake there. And just kind of get it held down here. Alright. So we have that done. And then I bend in the sides a little bit there where it dries. It can already have the creases there. Alright, so I've got that done. Now what I want to do, and I'm going to flip this over because I want to, well I guess it don't matter which way I cut it. Whichever way is the best way to see the line, I say that's how you should cut it. So at the bottom, on your inch and three quarter score line, okay, not the seven eighths inch, but the inch and three quarter 
you just want to take this and cut up to the score line, okay? On both, both totes here, or both sides here. Whoops. So let's go in here. And then if you want to, You can just take, I mean, and just a sliver there of it in case there was a little bit of an overhang. Just, you could easily just take a little bit of a sliver here off. I wouldn't take too much, but just a little, because sometimes you just don't get that cut right on that line. And it helps to uh, just have a little bit of that gone. It helps it to fold together better. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. All right, so there we are. So it looks like this. That's what we've got. Okay, so what I do then is I take one side and I'm going to overlap and glue here. So, if you have, like, maybe a, if I was a plain side for the back and a pattern side for the front, the first thing you want to determine is which side you're going to use as your front. Because, um, as to which one you're going to be overlapping. Because I have put all my folds to the back side or all my uh, double paper where it's raw edge to the back side. So that means the raw edge part is here, the raw edge part is here, and the raw edge part is here. And that is my back. I kept my front where you didn't have that, where you've glued those pieces together. So you want to be sure that you've got your front as, the, as your front and that you're gluing the back to whatever you're going to consider your back side, okay? Because you are going to have this showing, your raw kind of edge there. So I'm going to take this, okay, and I'm going to get my glue, and I'm gluing all of it, every bit of this side together. Okay. And you want it to just meet where your your sides are. You want it to be pretty um, close to that fold without overlapping. Okay. And you want it just right up, butted up to the edge. Then your score lines for your middle should be in the same place that way. And we're going to do the same thing, making sure that my back fold is going, or my overlap is going to the back. So here's my back overlap. I want to make sure this overlap has got my raw to the same side as this one. Okay? So we're going to get our glue on here. All right, and we're just going to take this, and you want something that's forgiving, so that a forgiving glue, so that you can move these before it dries, because you're going to have to, you know, kind of get that shifted, and you don't want your, if you use a runner, a tape, the tape runner, you might have to get it pretty right on as you first start. Okay, guys, so there is our box per se getting started here. Now my suggestion is and what I did was before I glued my bottom shut I went ahead and got everything ready to decorate my front and I decorated it where I could kind of just maneuver this where it was flat because I would have a harder time decorating when the box can't be laid flat. So I decorated my front and I decorated my back just like that. I just left these the bottom undone, okay, 
where I could shift it and work on it. All right. So then the next thing we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just give this a little bit of crease. Okay. Because that's my little gusset. I'm making my gusset here. And just go ahead and get that kind of. All right. And this is actually how you're going to measure in for your holes for your uh, handles. Okay. So what you could do before you glue that bottom is just kind of lay it flat with your gussets. Now, if you don't have your gussets, you know, if you decided not to have gussets, you're just going to have to kind of either do this to get them in the same place and squish those together or just mark them, you know, separately and punch them one at a time. But I'm going to punch them just two holes and go on both sides to just get it done in, in that one shot there, two shots. So, my handles are, let's see, my handles are three quarters down from the top and one and a half inch in from the side. Okay, so we're one and a half inches in from the side and then we've got to go one, two, three fourths of an inch down from the top. Okay, and I just make my mark. Same way here, we just come this way. We are one and a half inches in from the side and one, two, three, four inches down from the top. All right. And so then all we have to do is get our crocodile or hole puncher and just simply, I've got to reset my thing a little bit here. Okay. So then all we have to do is come in, punch, and punch. All right, and that will be my holes for my handles. So, that easy, guys. Uh, I just like doing them both at the same time, and that kind of puts them in the same exact spot when you do your handles. Okay, so now that I have got, of course, my front decorated, my back decorated, I'm ready to go ahead and get the bottom put together. So, super duper easy. Just bend your, bend your little flaps in from the bottom, okay? You still want to make sure that wherever your back side is, okay, so... This, let's see, this is my back side because here is my overlap going to the back. What I want to do is make sure that my raw is going to the back on the bottom as well. And that just keeps everything looking nice and tidy on the front. You don't have any raw edges anywhere on your front. So, what I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this, but what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of that glue on these little flaps, okay? Going to press that down, and even if I want to get down in here, maybe get my ruler or something to just kind of get that glue attached on those flaps. Then all I have to do is just take my glue here, and get the bottom on. Let's get it glued down. And guys, it is that easy. You know, I'll run this in here a little bit and run my hand in there, get that glue nice and pressed down. But there it is, it's that simple. Now, on this one, I added a couple of little pieces, a little couple of strips here, right? Uh, on this but that's not necessary I did that because actually I punched a little higher of a hole or something and I just kind of wanted to to cover it and make it look a little better otherwise I would have not had those on there but you could you could just cut you a couple little strips you know run you a little a couple of little strips there and just you know repoke your holes there um, to match but uh, that simple and then really all you have to do and I'm just gonna grab some pink here some pink twine just to just to show you how to get these handles in here okay and I believe what I did for those is I just went in and then I tied 
I just tied me a, a little knot there so that I had this part hanging down. Okay. Same way on this side, you just kind of go in, go in with your edge here, your bottom. And that's exactly what you want to do is just get it where you can tie it and you're, you've got your little pieces hanging down and that gives you your handle. So, so pretty simple guys, pretty, pretty simple. And these would be great at Christmas, these birthdays, just whatever you want to make a little gift tote box for. Um, just be super simple. So I grab this side and I'm going to tie it. And then usually what I do is I just grab my, however long my handle is, and I just try to measure it kind of this way. Kind of how I would, um, you know... I don't go through the trouble of uh, trying to cut them the exact same size. I just eyeball it most times. So I run it through, just kind of pull it, and I can see that those are probably about the same, you know, same feel when I grab them. Then I'll just take this in here and give it a tie. Of course, I would put a knot, not just one. I would actually put two knots in that. But there we are. There's our little tote, our little tote box, guys. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the little, the little craft with me. Hope it's not too confusing there, but anyway, just a fun little, little tote box. Uh, be sure and check out the playlist. Uh, like I said, all the links to everything will be in the description box below for you. And, uh, Guys, just have fun the month of August with this uh, Out With a Bang series. And uh, I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.